Hey, deserving listeners, it's time to continue our journey with Avery and Ash on 90 Day Fiance. Let's see what happens. My name is Dr. Kirk Honda. I'm a licensed therapist and a professor, and I often have things to say to the show, so let's see what happens here. I have a very specific way of actually dealing with things. I don't drink, I don't partake in marijuana. The way that I handle things is, every morning I wake up, I go to the water. I get into different type of meditation where I'm just there still, and the cold water allows me to control anger, control happiness. The universe vibrates, and it creates that vibration in my body. So that's great that he uh, practices something that is useful to him in terms of getting balance, helping him with his emotional regulation. That is fantastic. Having said that, I sometimes find that for some people, particularly men that I've seen anecdotally, they will have relational traumas, difficulties in their childhood that they are still healing from and are still affecting them and making them uh, feel negative emotions, anger, hurt, pain, upsetness, this kind of thing. And because our culture teaches men, and I don't know, you know the culture he comes from, I really have no idea what the gender associations are in his culture, but in Seattle, and in a lot of places of the world, we teach our boys that they have to control their emotions, that they have to, particularly hurt and pain. They can be angry at times, but they, they really have to not be weak and ex express hurt and sadness and pain. And so a lot of men as adults will resort, will resort to mindfulness as a way to try to control and suppress their emotions. And I get a lot of people contacting me saying, I have all these emotions and I don't know what to do with them and they're, they're causing all these problems. How do I cope? How do I deal with, you know, what skills can mindfulness get rid of these feelings? That sometimes is the answer, but it, if it is the answer, it's not the whole answer. Usually uh, a, a more healthy way to deal with your emotions is to talk about them, express them, figure out why you're hurt, what's happening in your life that's hurting you, what historical events have happened in your life that have yet to be resolved and healed from that are resonating in your emotions and in your you know life that you're being triggered by. Say you were abandoned as a child and then someone breaks up with you and that throws you into three years of suffering and you're like, why do I have all these emotions? Well, because you're a human being and it's normal to have that reactivity if you have abandonment in your past or whatever is in your past. And of course, he's innocent until proven guilty, but I, there's, there's a lot of data that we've seen thus far of someone who may have had a lot of difficulties growing up that is resorting to mindfulness to try to suppress it, maybe even a little bit of narcissism and denial of one's feelings to try to trick oneself and other people into believing that everything is fine. Uh, the things that he's done thus far, total red flags, total speculation, hopefully we'll find out as time goes on, indicates a personality structure where early in his life, he may have had to put on a good face for other people and say everything, you know, because no one was going to help him with his suffering or, you know, some kind of specific scenario that I wouldn't be able to speculate on that made it so that he had to act like everything was fine or else his work, his life would be worse. So imagine him at the age of four trying to be the good boy, trying to be impressive in some way and trying to act like everything is fine. And to admit that things are going wrong is to acknowledge so much that's going wrong that it would be overwhelming to the four-year-old. And so it's like, everything's fine. And, and then you have to figure out ways of lying and spinning the truth to uphold that notion that everything's fine. Total speculation. Uh, there's a pretty good chance that we'll get other data that will throw that hypothesis out of the water. As I always say when I do these episodes, everything that I'm saying is based on limited information that they're, that they're giving us on the show. I would have to properly assess them in my office to really know what was really happening. So everything I say should be taken with a massive grain of salt. Also, subscribe, hit the bell below on YouTube. Uh, you know, subscribe to the podcast on your podcast app. 
because we have over a thousand episodes on various topics and also become a patron on patreon.com. You can get access to our best episodes that way and comment below. What do you think of Ash? Let me know what you think of the, the, these two people. Hey, Betty. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. You're looking amazing, by the way. Well done with the uh, on point with the makeup. <laughs> <laughs> 85 to 90 percent of my clients are single women. <laughs> it's not like something that just came up. I, I want to work with women. Women, they want to connect and uh, they're struggling a little bit. And I'm here just to be able to guide them. They, of course, always edit this and it looks like it's been edited severely. So it's hard to know exactly what this session actually looked like. They're trying to make it look like there's some flirtation happening and maybe there was. But I'm reserving judgment because I haven't seen anything definitive yet that something is screwy or unethical about the way he's doing things. Now, as I've said in previous episodes, I'm, I'm not up to speed on Australian regulations around coaching. But in my neck of the woods, which I'm guessing is similar in Australia, is anyone can call themselves a coach. And uh, it's not regulated. And so there isn't an ethical code. There isn't a standard of practice. You uh, can't get, you can't remove someone's license the way you can remove mine. Um, and so uh, what is coaching? Uh, any coach can define that. Now, there are some organizations that are trying to define that, but that's yet to become standardized. I'm guessing in 20 years it will become standardized and it'll just become another profession like any other in our field. Uh, but we'll see. So... Uh, we can look at this and be like, well, that seems a little shady, but really what is coaching? You know, uh, now if he was doing therapy right now, we could actually say, well, there's a standard of what psychotherapy is supposed to look like. And that is not what it's supposed to look like. One, he is showing the session to a camera, which would be outside of ethics in my field. And he is also commenting on her makeup uh, which could be in the standard of practice, but doesn't sound like it, it would be. Anyway, let's continue watching this session. So Betty, um, we talked about your love language. Were you able to work out his love language? So um, gifts have been a way of showing our love, um, just even little love letters. Yeah, no, that's really good. I believe that I can actually really genuinely help people. And I'm very passionate about what I do. Okay, so we saw, we saw a little snippet of him talking about someone's love language. I sometimes talk about that, not in the strictest sense. I, us, I, I gener the, the general idea of that people, given their culture and their personality, have different ways of expressing love and have different ways of interpreting love messages. If you hug someone, uh, that could be, you know, like I might hug someone and say, I love you. And I'm trying to say, I really love you. Someone else might receive that hug and might, might, might not interpret that as a message of love. They have a different way of expressing love, not only in romantic relationships, but family relationships and, and so on. So he is trying to help her with her partner about how to love each other and how to figure out how each person loves each other. Totally legit. Sounds like a legit way of coaching someone. Um, about how to improve their relationships. Once you understand his love language, he will be more naturally compelled to come towards you. But um, you're very, you're very wise already, so I'm guessing it's not going to be hard. So, uh, <laughs> thank you. I would have to say, I don't do too bad with the ladies. Understanding single women, this is what I do, and this is what I'm good at. I have experienced a lot of heartbreak myself. Okay, so again, I'm guessing when people watch this, they're like, oh, he's a relationship coach. He knows how to talk to women. He knows how to manipulate people. I'm reserving judgment. There's nothing wrong with a relationship coach having, having confidence in their ability to connect with women uh, social outside of their professional work. There's nothing wrong with a guy who's like, you know what? Um, I, I'm a pretty good communicator and I'm, I'm pretty good at understanding how to navigate that with people. And that's a skill I have. And I've, and a lot of women will tell me that, that they'll be like, wow, you, you really know how to, 
how to talk to women. <laughs> so there's nothing wrong with him having confidence in that. Uh, we don't have to necessarily see, oh, he's a master manipulator. He's a psychopath. He's manipulating Avery. So let's, let's reserve judgment. I date quite a bit, but prior to Avery coming in my life, I have not been in a serious relationship for quite a long time. And who is this one? What's her name? Uh, Avery. Avery? Yeah. Wow, lovely. And she's coming in every day, so I thought actually that would be special for this her. This is going to be perfect. I've known Ash for about 15 years. He's been coming into my shop getting flowers. He's one of the best customers I've got. And who is he generally getting the flowers for? <laughs> Girls, of course. Again, reserve judgment. There's nothing wrong with a guy who dates a lot of different people as long as everything is ethical and he doesn't lie to people and he's nice. There's nothing wrong with there's nothing wrong with anyone who dates with a lot of different people and gives flowers. Uh, you know, let's let's reserve judgment on that as well until we get more data. I don't know how many girls he goes through. You don't know. I don't know, man. He has lots of girls. He knows what to say and what to do, and you know, he just he's so natural. I'm a bit anxious because every night we always broke up a few times. I want to be something and settle down with Avery, but she's a very cautious person. So, you know, it depends on if she will allow me to give love and feel comfortable receiving it. Okay, so another initial hypothesis. It's possible that he really does love her and really does want to marry her, is being true to her, and there's nothing squirrely about his love or his dedication to her. But because of, and this is where systems theory comes into play, where he is a little worried about losing her and feels like he has to smooth things over with positive, optimistic talk. And that triggers Avery's red flags. And she's like, wait, what? And she has traumas in her past about being lied to, maybe. And then she starts to pull away from him emotionally, like, wait, how come you're being shady about that? And then he, that triggers his worries about losing her. And so he gets more shady because he's trying to get her back, which causes her to be more concerned. And then he has to double down on those spins because and those lies, because if he admits that they're lies, then he's really going to lose her. And then that that's that systemic loop that a little... A little bit of a, you know, a, a butterfly flaps its wings in China and there's a hurricane in Florida where a little tiny little spin leads to her distancing, leads to more spin, more distance, more spin, more distance. And that's a, that's a hypothesis I have. I have very little data on that, but let's see if we can uh, find more data to disprove or, uh, or prove that uh, hypothesis. So, yeah, it will be... Up to up. All right. Well, that does it for that episode of Psychology in Seattle, in which I react to Avery and Ash on 90 Day Fiance. Tune in next time when we get more data to try to figure out what's happening. And everyone, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.